Hey, so welcome back to my channel. Okay, this is going to be a quick recap of Striking Out episode, season one, episode three. So it basically basically opens with a man, he's standing on the side of a football, on the sidelines of a football uh, field watching his son play. He s suddenly collapses from a heart attack. So next you see him, he's at the hospital. His son picks up the, he, you know, takes his cell phone, he calls his mom, and the nurse calls his wife. So what we quickly find out is that son called his mom who is his his wife and the nurse calls a different woman who is also claiming to be his wife so here's where the mess ensues so um basically the person the nurse called gets there first and so the son is just outside of the room and she got she, she she um, breezes past the sun and she walks in. It's like, I'm, I'm Mrs. O'Brien, the guy who uh, collapsed. His name is Barry O'Brien. And so she she walks past the sun and said, I'm his wife. I'm Mrs. O'Brien. And of course, the sun kind of, he it stops him in his tracks. He's looking like, that, that, that is not my mom. I don't know who that is. So he's kind of like, so this is when he finally get a glimpse of us. There's something wrong here. Okay, so she's, you know, stand, she's sitting by his bedside like any wife would do. And the next thing you know, you know, the boy's mother comes, uh, uh, walks up. She hugs him and she's like, well, what's, what's going on? And he was like, I don't know. There's a woman in there claiming to be his wife. And she's like, what? And so you quickly see the difference between these two women. They're like night and day. The boy's mother is just basically feral. She's just a violent, aggressive woman. And the first woman that showed up, she's basically, she's this kind of softer, kind of milder, uh, meek almost mousy kind of woman and so the mom storms in and she's like who basically who the hell is this and bitch who are you and why are you near my husband's uh sitting in my husband's room and you're a gold digger and that 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 and she basically physically grabs the woman drags her outside she got her all jet all jammed up got her you know pulling her hair and all kind of stuff and finally hospital security comes up separates the two and it basically just stops with them staring at each other okay so uh, Ray finds himself at the hospital and I'm not sure why, but okay. And Tara gets a phone call. So this is how Tara is brought into it. So she, you know, she arrives at the hospital and she meets the first Mrs. O'Brien <laughs> that showed the one that showed up at the hospital. And she, you know, was basically explaining the situation and saying, uh, and she was asking her, did, so do you don't have anyone to represent you? The lady, the lady said, no. And Tara was like, well, how did you find out about me? She said, oh, well, I called Dunbar, which is, t uh, Tara's old firm. And she said, I was recommended to you. And she was like, oh, really? So she's kind of confused. Like, why are they giving, you know, cases away? And eventually it makes sense. So next you see, um, uh, Eric and his and his father basically saying mrs basically the reason somehow she was uh referred to tara and that's because dunbar represents barry o'brien and his wife so it would have been a conflict of interest and this was all a setup because you then you eventually find out that it was the receptionist who referred the lady uh the first o'brien to tara probably at the behest of her boss the uh Eric's father Richard and it's like they're constant there are things that are constantly coming up where they're being thrown together where they're, they're having to uh be in the occupy the same space and so his father basically sends him there and this is Eric doesn't know at this point that Tara is at representing the other person so he arrives he sees Tara they see each other they're kind of looking at each other like what are you doing here da, 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 da. okay and so she's like, she finally pulls Eric to the side. What are you doing here? And he's like, oh, well, our firm represents um, Barry O'Brien and his wife, which would be the, the fairer one. <laughs> so, and the fairer one, her name is Karina. The kind of mousy one is named, I believe, Julie. Okay. So, uh, basically, the hosp basically, he, the uh, Barry, the husband, he needs emergency surgery. And so they need to kind of identify who the next of kin is so they can get permission to, to perform the surgery. So here, you know, the them trying to uh, prove that they are the real Mrs. O'Brien. And so it was determined that they would need to bring in their marriage certificates to um, validate, they would need to validate their marriage that way. Okay, so Tara 
goes with her client to her house and she's digging through um digging through her paperwork trying to find her marriage certificate and they you know she lives in this beautiful home they have two children together and she's basically talking to Tara and basically like, you know, I don't know what's going on and on here. Um, this is crazy. That woman is crazy. Da, 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 da. Eric goes home with his client, Karina, who is just basically, she's tearing the house up. She's like a, a bull in a china shop. She's like, she's just so pissed off. She's so aggressive. But then she had to admit that, you know, what the woman is saying sounds like, sounds, um, could be that it sounds like it's uh truthful like the lady is being honest with her but of course she's still pissed she was basically like that bitch is gonna pay even though i'm like what she didn't do anything it's the she was more pissed off at the other woman than she was at her husband but isn't that the way it go okay okay so they get back to the hospital and at this point tara has already called Meg to kind of do some research on um, barry to find out whatever paper you know whatever she can find out about him and they quickly realized that he had some connection with organized crime. And so they uh, they get back to the hospital. They're sitting, uh, both the wives and their representatives, Tara and Eric, are sitting in the office. And they both present their marriage certificates. And they confirmed that Karina, the feral wife, <laughs> her marriage is valid. Because she married him nine years before he married Julie. Okay. So... Um, basically, so Karina is now basically in charge of what happens next as far as his medical care. And so Julie is, you know, trying to figure out what she can do to kind of protect herself because they have two children. But, you know, Tara's trying to, trying to let her know that you, she really doesn't have a leg to stand on because your marriage is invalid. And regardless of what emotional pleas that you, you can make, the courts are only interested in what's legal, and what's legal is his marriage to Karina, because it predates yours by nine years. Okay, so she's still trying to figure out a way to help, um, to help uh, Julie try to get some kind of um, assistance. Obviously, she would be um, eligible for child support once they do the DNA testing and find out, you know, those are his children. So she would be able to get um, some financial assistance that way. But, um, you know, she still loves the guy and she still wants, you know, she still wants the family unit. Okay, so Karina and her son are sitting basically next to her, uh, next to her husband's, uh, bedside, basically waiting for the doctors to come in, whatever, with whatever, you know, diagnosis they, they've come up with. And basically they're saying he needs a kidney transplant. And so he's saying that they don't have any... Don't know where they are, but the doctor said he's going to start. Or I don't know if it was the doctor or the administrator. The administrator said he was going to start making calls. And basically, they eventually came back and said that they found someone who could be um, about a thirty percent match. So it just wasn't. They kind of was weighing whether or not it was was it was even worth the risk. And so the son was basically like, um, "You can test me to see, you know, if I would be a match for him." And, of course, the mother's like, hell no, you're not doing that. He's, like, 15 or 16. And she was like, well, I think he's 16. And she she was dead set against it. And so the administrators were basically explaining to her the, the pros. And basically, he's his biological son. There was a great chance that he could match. Obviously, he wouldn't have to take the whole thing because I think the kidney is a, is, a, is an organ that kind of that regenerates. So they, you know, so she, they basically explained to her, but they, uh, the, the pros, but they're also kind of explaining to her the risk. And she was like, well, no. You know, like any mother would, she um, was against her son going through the procedure. Uh, Tara eventually meets up with Vincent. She knows that she can't go before a judge with what she has um, with a, um, on the marriage situation with Julie. Because she know it's already been proven that her marriage is not valid. And so it would just be career suicide to try to go and try to argue that in a court of law. And so Vincent basically told back to, backed up that um, her sentiment is like, Judges hate having their time wasted, and it's going to be bad for your career. I just would not. Um, I I wouldn't if I were you. Basically, is what he was saying. Like I I just wouldn't go there if if I were you. And so Ray is um, 
is asleep. He's asleep on the raggedy sofa, the raggedy sofa he brought into the office as a pull-out bed. And so, like I said, we saw in the previous episode, he's been sleeping there. So now he has this pull-out bed, you know, sofa that he can sleep on. But at the same time, Tara doesn't know that he's been sleeping in the office. The um, son of... The son calls him and kind of finds his way to Tara's office. Which, again, puts Sarah, uh, Tara in a terrible situation. Because, again, she's meeting with the client, the, uh, the opposing clients uh, without their legal representation, representative. And so, Tara comes in that morning and she sees, uh, she, kept, uh, she kind of surprises uh, Ray. And she sees, I can't remember the son's name for some reason off the top of my head. And so she's in shock. She's like, okay, well, what are you doing here? And she was basically, she kind of chewed Ray out like Ray. The, the guy basically wanted Tara to represent him because he wanted to be able to make the decision to help his father. And Tara was like, you basically threw him out. Like, you can't be here. Uh, you know, you have to leave. And he was trying to explain what's going on. And Ray was trying to explain what's going on. Ray was trying to explain to her, no, no, it's not like that. And she was basically, no, you don't understand. He has to go. He has to leave. And so eventually he leaves. And, Ta and uh, Tara is furious because she was like, I mean, he was trying to be helpful, but he doesn't really understand the uh, the rules. They're, like, there are rules to this shit. Like, we, you can't, we, I can't just be meeting with people from the opposing side. And so she eventually notices the bed. Like, what, well, have you been sleeping here? And so he said, well, yeah, I'm kind of in between places. And so... She basically fires him. She throws him out. And I mean, I think all of the frustration and all of this got, got the best of her. And she ends up throwing him out. She ma ha she makes a... Uh, terror in her communications with Julie, she realized that Barry, at one point, was going to set up a trust for the kid, Julie's children, to make sure that they were going to be financially provided for. But during that meeting, something happened and it ended abruptly. So Tara and Julie meet at Dunbar where she meets with Eric and she's trying to get a copy of this file where she's trying to find out why the meeting abruptly ended. And so here's where she realized where well, it was confirmed. She speculated before, but it was confirmed that even though Julie didn't come out initially say it, that she knew that he was already married. And that's why the talks of the the trust and all of that, that, that whole conversation ended abruptly because she knew he was already married. And so basically she was saying, well, you know, I, I, uh, Tara asked her why, why did she lie? And she was like, I'm afraid you, I was afraid you wouldn't represent me if I told you the truth. Da, 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 da. And, and so Tara basically reassured her to know that I'm still going to do whatever I can to help. And so Tara gets the file and su she's surprised at what she sees. Okay. So the the uh the they um during this meeting she finds out that Karina is basically all set to let Barry die, like because she she, she doesn't want to allow the son to have the procedure and they haven't been able to find the match and basically Barry, Barry's on borrowed time basically the machines are basically basically keeping him alive at this point, and so of course, um Julie hears about this and she gen genuinely loves Barry so she's like so now it's basically a fight. To keep Karina from terminating Barry's life. Like to having him pull the plug. Because you know she spun this whole. Well he didn't want to live like a vegetable. And he basically wanted to go out like a G. And he you know this whole thing right. And so basically they said. You know she was able to get. Uh, a hearing. Uh, to kind of get an injunction. So that she can't make any decisions. Make that make that kind of decision right right now. And so she finally gets the file. Where they initially started. Uh, these talks about setting up the trust. And she's walking up to the court. Eric is standing outside with, I think her name was Caroline. And of course, they're both kind of, it was just another awkward, it was an awkward moment. Because Caroline is the person he was having an affair with when <laughs> Tara walked into the apartment. She basically was like, I need to talk to Eric right quick. And Caroline's like, oh, fine, fine. She walked away. And basically, no, at this, no, she hadn't, she didn't, uh, they haven't set the trial yet. This is where she used a file to get Eric to set, you know, to pull some strings to get the trial, get um, the hearing. Because in the file, 
she stated that basically she could have brought charges against his father because his father basically set up some legal documents when he knew that his client was committing a crime back he when he knew that Barry had committed bigamy. And so basically that was enough for Eric to pull whatever strings he needed to pull to get the hearing. So they get to court and uh they um, they get to court and Vincent is basically um, the head uh, attorney. And so he's basically pulling, you know, having doctors come up to talk about the uh, his condition and what they would need in order to save his life. And basically saying that, you know, his wife is saying that, you know, he just wants to go. He wants to be, go in peace and dignity. And that to that to that, okay. And he basically was talking about the son who could be a match, but she doesn't want to have him tested. And the basically, basically the, the doctors, the professionals were basically basically reiterating the same thing as far as the pros and cons. And so, baby, so eventually Vincent was like, okay, I would like um, if we if she would be willing, um, I would like to speak with Karina, who is the the feral wife, right? And so he's basically questioning her because she at this point they know that she has questionable motives. So Meg is still doing research. You know, Meg had done some research to find out you know more about Karina at Ray's behest. So uh, she, Meg eventually walks into the courtroom with some with a note for Tara and some some uh, documentation and photos. And so while she was up there, she was basically, you know, saying that same sob, sob story about how her husband wanted to die with dignity and he doesn't want to be a vegetable and hooked up to these machines, that, 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 that. And so that's when they tried out what they knew about her, basically saying that we know about your affair. They basically showed the photos to the court and the judge was like, is this your lover? And is this you? And you guys are picking out engagement rings. I mean, she, I mean, they had all the goods on Karina. And it basically painted her as the woman who was willing to let her husband die so that she can get 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 everything. And so he won't be in a position if he's dead, then whatever he would have given would have been forced to give to Julie is no longer an issue. And so of course she was pissed and they basically uh told her uh no we're we're not going to uh they're not going to pull the plug or whatever we're not going to let him die and then they started asking his son questions who was also in the courtroom basically explain basically asking him if he understood the consequences of what he was what he was um asking what he wanted to do and he basically said yes i do and they went ahead and let him go ahead and have the procedure and of course he was a match tara goes to the hospital to meet with uh mr o'brien and his wife who was julie not karina and of course his son was there and to get her get to get payment for representing them and so he basically wanted her to be his like personal attorney like on call and she was like you know uh i think i'm going to stick more with family law and he was like well we're a family and she kind of gave them some kind of half or uh -huh, okay and no, uh, no, I'm getting the hell out of here and away from all you crazy mofos. So, um, basically, that's how the episode ended. And, yeah, I am going to leave this here. There's only one more episode in the season, which I'm going to try to upload tomorrow. So, I will talk to you guys later.